This one is called Christmas with Cliff, a 32 minute banger. I have not seen this and I really hope you haven't either. I straight up held this in, baby. I did not want to watch this without you mother You understand me? I literally, you know, I had so many techniques that I could have learned from this video, but I did not. And the reason for why I did not is because I got love for the game, okay? I held frame, sigma behavior, alpha behavior, whatever the f you want to call it. Let's do it. This is 46-year-old Clifford Burns, who 51 minutes prior to this moment, drove up to his estranged wife's house in Warren County. Once he got there, he forced his way inside and attacked both his wife and his stepdaughter with a 17-inch tactical hunting knife. 22-year-old Megan Jenkins suffered serious injuries to her left arm but managed to survive. 42-year-old Patricia Burns wasn't so lucky. She was stabbed five times in the torso and pronounced dead the moment she arrived at the hospital. Seven minutes later, Clifford Burns showed up at the Warren County Police Station to hand himself in. Clifford, you gotta bear with me. I have my glasses on, alright? I know my rights and everything. You don't have to even read it. Right. Just give me my charges. I'm pleading not guilty and I want to be put in a cell. You have the right to remain silent. I'll sign your name right I there. I sign my name to nothing. Okay. When this bra can do this on Christmas, fuck me in the ass like this, it was my last straw, I'd rather live in prison. Over the next 5 hours, 13 minutes and 42 seconds, Clifford Burns will achieve something quite remarkable, which is the fact he somehow manages to employ every single ego defense mechanism known in psychodynamic literature. He will essentially blame everyone and everything on his current situation apart from himself and in the process shut down critical parts of his own defense that he will later attempt to use in court. Hey, Do you know when a woman snaps you and keeps your kids away from you? What it does to a man? That you work and pay for your kids your whole fucking life? Cliff had two daughters with the woman he just murdered, a 15 and 16 year old. One was out shopping during the attack, while the other witnessed the attack and called 911. Cliff will bring them up a lot to say how much he loves them, but it's important to note they were both absolutely terrified of him. He was abusive to everyone in his family, and his biological daughters were no exception. They hadn't seen him in over a year up to this date, and essentially wanted nothing to do with him. Then the Bacchus brothers rigged the charges when that fucking guy goes over and shoots my old lady's house up and beats the fuck out of her, and he gets misdemeanors, you cocksuckers. Fuck you, motherfucker. He was talking about his kids 12 seconds ago, and now out of absolutely nowhere, he's going off on whoever the Bacchus brothers are. So here's the context. Patricia was married to Cliff for 15 years. She left him in 2010 after suffering nonstop domestic abuse. Two months later, she started dating a firefighter named Ted Bacchus. The two fell in love, but argued a lot, and one of the arguments led to Ted firing one round from his gun into the ceiling of Patricia's bedroom. Patricia then... What the fuck is going on in America, bro? N-word warning? Okay, so yeah, okay, he's gonna say the N-word. ...tried forcing him out of the house, at which point Ted pushed her into the kitchen counter and then onto the floor, causing her to hit the back of her head. Ted then left, and Patricia went to the emergency room where she was treated for bruising to the head and lower back. She reported the incident, and Ted pleaded guilty in exchange for six misdemeanors, which caused some controversy, as many thought the charges were too lenient, and there was speculation that he was given special treatment because he had two brothers in the local police force at the time. It's quite the story, and Cliff will cling on to this story for dear life. He will claim it's the reason he explodes into these uncontrollable rages at the mere thought of Ted Bacchus. Yet as this video plays out, you'll start noticing the true source of the animosity, which as many of you will have already guessed, is jealousy. He will give himself away on this element multiple times without realizing. He'll also initiate this item of subject matter in the most random and creative ways that at times will make what he's talking about virtually incomprehensible. <laughs> So we've had to create this notification for the more disorienting moments he brings it up. You know what happened up there. All misdemeanors, nine of them, when he shot the house up with an unregistered handgun. Do you know who Teddy Bacchus is? 
If I ever could get my hands on him, I'd fucking kill him. I'm a fucking man in every aspect, motherfucking the fucking game. I gotta reframe myself, because I'm really, I can't even take it no more. The two officers aren't the interrogators. They're just watching Cliff so he doesn't hurt himself or damage property. The actual interrogator will arrive shortly. You know what it is. I love the broad. She took everything from me. My lawyer called me today and said I'm going to jail for a violation of not paying child support. This dude, straight up, sounds like every guy from Boston. Based on the information of this violation, he was facing somewhere between 3 to 15 days in jail. Paid his punt 250 a fucking week. I lost everything. My fucking business, all my vehicles, and my fucking house. I'm whittled up to a $600 apartment while this cunt runs around on my fucking money. His freelance business had been on the decline for the last five years, which is the actual reason for everything he just mentioned. The Bacchus brothers rigged his charges, and this is what I heard because I know everybody in the town. Okay. The, the man that built the fucking town hall told me he was going to lose his gun fucking, his hunting license, so they didn't give him felonies. You did that shit down in Albany, you still wouldn't be out of jail today. They would have fucked you up. This is the Wild West, man, and I'm a wild motherfucker, ain't I now? In the more common circumstance, when someone is facing the inevitability of spending the next several decades in prison, the more grandiose elements of their character tend to dissipate. The nature of their situation rapidly sets in the feelings of anguish and despair, leaving not much room for anything else. Least of all the more extravagant, or perhaps fraudulent aspects to one's character. This guy Cliff is very opposite. much an exception. He clings on to a particular aspect of his personality that we can only describe as Rambo Cliff. The second concept so regurgitated that it literally needs its own notification. The moniker is inspired by a well-known franchise centered around a highly capable special forces operator, and it was chosen to encapsulate Cliff's varied attempts to appear tough and intimidating. This ranges from his deadly skills at unarmed combat, to his proficiency with a firearm, and operational effectiveness in the mountainous regions of the United States. You would have loved to have a motherfucker like me in Iraq, wouldn't you? I've got them fucking tile heads. It's worth noting that Cliff never served a single day in the military. Oh, dude, this is... Oh, my God, I love this man. I love Cliff. Cliff is literally every American, dude. Every fucking Amerabrain dickhead in my fucking chat. But how dare you fucking disrespect the military, you fucking motherfucker. You do not respect America. That's like straight up. He never served. LARPing is a fucking military guy. It's awesome. Thinks he's like a deadly weapon. I love this guy. He also had no training whatsoever in combat. You know this motherfucker's been like, yo, if you fucking sent me down there to Afghanistan with like Henry, me and fucking Henry, we would clear that shit out. Joe Biden's doing a bad job. He's doing a bad fucking job. I should be down there. Give me some fucking white monsters, dude. We will fuck that shit up. You know what I'm saying? Taliban more like Taliban. I'll turn that shit into Talladega Nights, baby. Let's fucking go. Sports or martial arts. Unless you count the made-up variation of kung fu he demonstrates throughout this interrogation, then by the end of the night, he'll have acquired approximately three and a half minutes of experience. I love this country, and it fucking did me wrong. Fucking wrong! I'm gonna tell you what listen it is. Bring the Bacchus in, brothers, and I'll fight them one-on-one -on -one with one fucking hand. I'll break both their fucking jaws right off them. I believe you. Do you believe me, motherfucker? I, I can see you're very passionate. You want to see? There it is, white power. That's what I believe in. The Irish. You guys, you deal with weapons every day. I had AK-47s, AR-15s at my disposal. I could have made this a war. You want to know what my mindset was? Take her out, spray paint the building, let's play back his boys, and take him in the mountains. You would have to drop a fucking platoon in for me! A platoon, brothers! I kept the war, I came here and did the right thing, I turned myself in. I'll go to prison. Listen, you guys, I gave my children everything. Victoria fucking Secrets and their fucking 15. Abercrombie, Nikes, American Eagle. Sure. What do you fucking think I don't know the names? You know how fucked up I am right now? Because I love my wife and I love my kids and I did right by that bitch. I met her in a strip club. Next thing I know, this cocksucker, I'm, I'm traveling in this unit every day. Two hour fucking commute and he's fucking my wife. Hell of a choice in men. The fucking scumbags living above an apartment. Paying 400 a fucking month to live above a bar room with a fucking beat up pickup truck. I make 100000 a fucking year. I'm a pro tree climber.
Let's go. What the fuck is that? A pro tree climber. That's a fucking, that's a hard job, bro. That's not easy. That's a hard ass job, bro. I love this guy. There is apparently another word for a tree surgeon. Coming home, fucking her in my bed. I had 10,000 of brand new furniture. I gave the fucking cunt. What more do you want? How much do you want to kick the fucking thing? She bought a cigarette out on me every day. It's Christmas, my third Christmas alone, third fucking Thanksgiving. Well now, motherfucker, it's time to party. Cliff's future defense will go for a manslaughter charge, relying on the notion that he had a psychotic break, that upon hearing of the arrest warrant, thought he would never see his daughters again because of it, at which moment he lost all control of his own judgment and decision-making, resulting in the terrible action Dog, he lost control of his own judgment and, and decision making the moment that he read the fucking Turner Diaries and was like, this is extremely my fucking shit. I don't need to read another fucking book for the rest of my life, motherfucker. Immigrants are coming over. We got to stop them, dude. White power. That's when he lost control of all judgment. Something fucking fried, okay, in the mainframe. And then ever since then, it has gone awry, okay? If anything, the divorce court just simply escalated the, the brain rot. Oh, this is so good. Oh, I love this fucking guy. Oh, JCS, I missed you. ...that followed, but he just spoke about grievances that stem back to over three years ago. He's giving away evidence to suggest that the attack was influenced by revenge and retaliation, not just by a singular moment of madness stemming from his undying love as a father. Listen, you lucky I'm in my right mind because I was going to have a shootout, which is... But I did it the right way. I handled it like a man, so thank you. Thank okay? you. No, that's right. If I'm pretty goddamn good, I could drop. Shut the fuck up. You literally stabbed your fucking helpless wife. And you couldn't even murder your 15 year old daughter with a fucking hunter knife. Dude, yeah, I would have had a fucking shootout with you dudes. Like, suck my cock. Typical fucking pussy Nazi motherfucker, dude. Drop a 30 round mag and fucking. I don't even want to tell you the time. I'll pop the other one. I'll take it again. I know what time it is. An unregistered fucking handgun. You know this motherfucker's looking for reggae, but like white nationalist reggae that doesn't have degenerate shit in it, you know? Okay, bro. Yeah, there's a hard R in it. Yeah, he's a white, he's a white nationalist. He also said the, the T word. He said towel head earlier. Okay, so he's going to say more. I know. Chill. In an apartment complex. If that dude was here, I'd try to crack him. Right? You know what time it is. And she said he wanted to marry her. Knew her for fucking six months. I had 15 years in her and two beautiful children. And here's the kicker with the stripper. Cliff spends the next four and a half minutes explaining his unequivocal superiority to Ted Backus. Once the tirade is over, he finally calms down. I was in Hadley right on the border. Yep. And I bought the house on Luzon. We remodeling it. Mm -hmm. The whole house lights up. The designated criminal investigator will now enter the room to conduct the interrogation. The timing seems almost perfect as Cliff appears to be compliant for the first time. Doug David, sir, nice to meet you. I'm sorry, I don't know your name. Burns Clifford R. Oh, Cliff, nice to meet you, sir. Um, you know, you guys, this is... I don't want to be disrespectful. You know what I'm saying? I'm sorry. What's on my mind is the Bacchus brothers and your fucking corrupt charges that were rigged. The interrogator, Detective Doug David, will come to have a rather complicated relationship with Burns Clifford R. From Doug's perspective, it's Christmas Eve. He doesn't want to be sitting in a police station going back and forth with a psycho murderer. He wants to get in, get the suspect's account of what happened, then get out. But unfortunately for him, Cliff has other plans for their Christmas Eve together. He went over and shot my wife's house up at the fucking... That means felonies across the board. Okay. Um, I'm just getting arriving here, so I'm not quite sure what transpired this evening, and we'd like to just try to find out a little bit of what transpired. Yes. As a man's been pushed to the edge. What fucking place? Oh, this dude literally just did not want to spend Christmas alone. By the way, you know, murder mystery solved. For the record, like that's what it is, though. You up today on Christmas Eve, telling him you're putting a warrant out for his arrest if he didn't pay his child support. That fat fucking cunt bar next door in the fucking support collection unit. If Teddy Bacchus is the love rival in Cliff's comic book inspired perception of reality, then Barb, from Support Collection, is most definitely the arch nemesis. And also our third topic of discussion that requires its own notification. 
Barb's occupation is handling child support payments, which includes following up with the debtors when they don't come through. Cliff genuinely appears to resent this woman on a cellular level. Her name alone will at times bring him to a place where he morphs into some type of primal being, sustained only through its unrelenting quest for murderous revenge against a collections administrator. It's a difficult thing to accurately explain, but you'll be given multiple visual examples later on in this video. I missed two payments. Okay. And, and then what, what happened after that, sir? I don't know what happened. My lawyer called me up, said there's a warrant out for my arrest. Okay. And possibly, um, again, I'm just walking in. What happened this evening, sir? I lost my life this evening over a fucking stripper and an alcoholic piece of shit. All right? The gun was unregistered. Every fucking bullet in the chamber was a fucking felony. You read Governor Cuomo's laws? D did you drive up here, sir, from your house? Go fuck yourself. How the fuck do you think I got here? Flew or walked? My car's right out in the fucking parking lot. Are you fucking stupid? Cliff is clearly aware that giving away crime scene information can be detrimental for his defense, something he probably learned from the show Criminal Minds, which he'll later state is the only thing he's able to watch on TV. Them Bacchus brothers, I would have loved to ran into them. She must have had a fucking heart on she fucking on Christmas Eve. Can't leave me to fuck alone. Admit it, what are the charges when you take an unregistered fucking handgun in an apartment complex and dislodge it? Look, you can't even, you want, I'll wipe that smirk off your fucking face, motherfucker. You ever yeah, laugh at me again? No, you're smiling like you think no, it's funny. I don't, sir. You I just smile. After you drove up here, sir? Fuck you, you nigger. What happened? What happened after Suck you drove up here? Suck a dick. After you drove well, up go here, go fuck happened? yourself. What happened after go you drove up here? Go fuck yourself. What do you think, I can't kick you upside the head with my fucking boot right now? I'll make you wear this size A, motherfucker. The interrogator sits through 110 seconds of Cliff's commentary, size which is eight. mostly a summary of how Cliff would comfortably beat him in a fist fight. The lecture eventually reverts back to the topic of child support, and the oh. interrogator will now attempt to establish a connection. Yeah, size eight, that's, uh, I mean, that reveals a little bit. Okay, listen, listen, listen. How is JCS not going to show the fun stuff, dude? Him fantasizing and salivating over how he could like you know drop kick everybody there that's like the good shit why'd they skip over the good shit and by finding common ground in the subject she's putting a warrant out on christmas eve for me not for missing two payments well if it's any cops yeah don't worry he did not say the c word for just the n word okay week, um, that's a thousand a month. That's like that, you make ninety thousand a year. That, that's more than that's I more than you make. That, that's more How's than that? I make. Well, actually, you're right. It's more than I make too. But it, exactly. Uh, Barb, Barb, Barb. She fucking started a war. This fucking cunt. I missed two child fucking support payments. The fucking cunt. I bet you she wasn't even working today. I can tell you, I've been through through uh, some difficult times myself. All right. Of course, he's a detective. I, I, he knows. Um, I know it's not an easy thing to deal with, especially around the holidays. I lost everything, and I'm definitely, I'm hurt. What do you mean you lost everything? The woman's taken everything. I just, I can't even live anymore. I just, I'm done. I lost every fucking thing in my life I work for. Don't you fucking get it? And when a t man loses his little baby girl, that he fucking loves and pays every fucking thing for that. And here we get our first glimpse of what appears to be genuine sorrow. It partially consists of the thought of his daughters, but for the most part, revolves around financial woes and general self-pity. I went to courts, I spent all my money, I hired the biggest lawyer going, and I got fucked, I don't get it. She made a mockery of me, man. She knew the guy six months, he beat the fuck out of me, shot the house up. What kind of a fucking woman can have a man like that in her life? Thousands of dollars, I work for nothing, man. Everything's being taken from me. What the fuck do you want from me? I work too hard for my shit. Today was it, it was the breaking point. They can have it all, you motherfuckers. Take it all. Take my dump truck. I work my fucking life off. Work my chipper, my business. Take my car, my fucking thirty thousand dollar motorcycle. I work for. Take it all, motherfuckers. I don't care no more. Just put me in a fucking jail cell. Notice how the only thing that he cares about in the American reactionary mind is the material possessions that he has, because commodity fetishization is that powerful that his entire identity revolves around how much money he makes and all the cool toys that he's been able to purchase as a consequence of that where are the daughters where is the love for your family 
the daughters that you supposedly love. He's like, take the fucking chipper and the chopper. I don't give a fuck. It's thirty thousand dollars. I had to put a fucking down payment fatter than you know your entire bonus for the last year. You broke fucking detective. Take my fucking truck. I mean, even in his weakest moment where the truth is supposed to come out, the only truth that comes out is how much he fucking, uh, how much his possessions mean to him and how much uh, they make up a part of his personality, his personhood. Hot take, he's unironically a victim of the degrading, degrading of American capitalism. Uh, that is a hot take because it's also everyone is, but this man is already like financially secure. He's literally a white supremacist, bro. Was at the house tonight when you came. I told you. I'm fucking there. You ask me again, I'm gonna fucking rip your fucking head off. Did you do this to Teddy Bacchus? I'm gonna tell you right now. If he's at my house, I would've cut his fucking head off. Alright? Okay. Cliff primarily sits in silence for 90 seconds. Only in the fucking worst part about that is like he's not gonna do shit to the desk or is or the handcuffs. The only thing he does there is hurt himself a lot. He's just like fucking his wrist up. Interjecting at random moments to further express his hatred for the Bacchus brothers and Barb. The interrogator once more attempts to establish a connection. I used to get these, um they'd mail me these things. Listen, I got everything, the coupons, all of it. Yeah, but and you know my coupon. Irish pride? His Irish pride was the reason he didn't make use of his child support coupons. And also the reason he doesn't accept welfare. I don't go to welfare. I'll never collect a fucking thing from this cocksucker, nasty nigger fucking state. You do not appear to be a welfare person. That's You're right. Hard -working and I fucking fuck. Yeah, I got Irish pride. Fucking, I haven't worked in three weeks. You see the cows is just coming off my fucking hands? You're a hard working man. That's what I am. And I had a fucking stripper take everything and a guy fucking was an alcoholic too. They're both alcoholics. That's my fucking pride right there, Irish brother, Ireland. I fucked up tonight. I ruined my whole fucking life over a fucking stripper. Who lives above a fucking bar room at 400 a week and tries to beat up truck? Well, it was it today. I lost everything, didn't I, buddy? 100,000 in business equipment, 30-something. Doesn't Ireland have social safety nets? What the fuck are you talking about? He's not from Ireland, bro. This motherfucker is like eight generations removed from Ireland. There's nothing Irish about him. He's just a fucking American hog. He loves white culture. He thinks what something about white culture. He is a white supremacist. $1,000 motorcycle, the Z28 out in the fucking parking lot, but I'm a bum. What do I sell, crack or something? Looks like a hard working man. That's right, that's what I am. I got fucked by the system. You know the deal? You gotta fuck some of your Irish once in a while because the white man's a minority now in this world. How old are you? 53. 50 fucking three. You look pretty good for your age. But why? That's right. White people are a fucking minority. You better not say the say word, mother. <laughs> say word. The C word, motherfucker. How many times has this guy posted on LSF you think about? Well, he, he can't now because he's in jail, but. <laughs> I bet this motherfucker will be posting on LSF about the word cracker. And how unacceptable it is while calling me a towel head. <laughs> Are your eyes all bagged up? Having a couple shots tonight yourself? No. I'd be a fucking maze. Cliff insults the investigator's appearance some more before crying about his finances again. I have eaten in two fucking days. I put my last horn in my tank. If any consolation, I can tell you I've been through child support and been through the whole thing. So, and it's not easy. It's not easy seeing, not seeing your kids on holidays or seeing them at all. Um, I know the system sometimes doesn't sound like it's fair. It doesn't seem the like it's fair. The lady fucked me over there. Her name is oh. Barb from the Warren Falcon County Fucking Support Collection you know, over there. What happened up there? I don't know what the fuck happened. I blacked the fuck out. Do you know what? What when you got there, or who was there when you got there? I couldn't tell you nothing. When you, when you got up there, you want some shit? Uh, if you can just set it on the table, please. It's in my business card. Just you ask me another question about when I got there, I'm gonna spit on you. Please, All right? Don't ask me again. 
The investigator takes that as the cue to end the interrogation, so he starts trying to collect Cliff's basic information for his intake process. Cliff, however, isn't done. He's got a lot more emotional baggage left on board, and feels like right about now is a convenient time to offload the entire cargo. So every time- Yeah, bro, he like, he just did not want to be alone for Christmas. Like, I mean, he wanted to do the murder, obviously, but like, he wanted to bring himself in because he did not want to spend another Christmas alone. And he provides a- I'm not saying this so you feel bad, I mean, feel good, uh, feel bad about it, and like, you know, start to, to, to empathize with him or in any way, you know. Homie's trauma dumping pretty hard. Piece of basic information. He follows up with an average of four and a half minutes of incessant rambling. I don't even fucking remember. I got a post office box at the post office. Mm -hmm. You guys don't understand. I couldn't live my fucking life every day to fucking count was. Cliff degrades his wife for 43 uh. seconds, clarifies his superiority to Ted Backus for just over a minute, then further declares his un- Bro, I need to hear how he describes he's superior to Ted Backus. I just, I can't believe they didn't show any of that. It was kind of fucked up. This fucking Backus guy, dude, he's an alcoholic, lives on top of a fucking bar. He doesn't even have a fucking $30,000 vehicle like I do yielding hatred for Barb. He now asks the police officer to loosen his handcuff. Bro, he's got a fucking bad truck. He's got like a 92 F-150, uh, you know? This is like fucking bullshit. I, on the other hand, I got a Raptor. I got fucking truck nuts on this shit. Can you loosen this up? I'm, my whole hand's cut up, you guys. Just a tiny little, one little click. I ain't going nowhere, I ain't done it. I showed the talent. I'm okay. done, you guys. At least I got what it came here. I could have went in the fucking mountains. I fucking lost it. I don't even know how the fuck I got up here. I ain't got no gas in my fucking car. I'm down to no money. I got no fucking food. I don't know what she's wanting me to do when I got a lady violate me on a fucking Christmas Eve. What the fuck was happening? Anybody gonna ask me some fucking questions, motherfucker? You punk ass motherfucker. Bro, you know. Okay, dude. This guy's a fucking. Bro, come on, dude. These are homies, bro. Okay, you will never convince me that these two are not fucking homies, dude. Identical. If he wasn't tree climbing, you know he'd be on the force, okay? I talked you a fucking break tonight, motherfucker. We appreciate it. I already told Do you. Do you that. fucking appreciate you? <laughs> Somebody said, Tomies. You're gonna run with me through the mountains, motherfucker? Said, you would have to drop a platoon in for me. We covered that, man. And we talked earlier about that. And we said thank you. You did the right These guys are like, by the way, cop, look at how fucking nice the cops are. We've been watching it for 20 minutes and I forgot to mention. There's a reason why I'm saying they're fucking homies. Have you ever seen any interrogation footage where a black man even says the C word, okay, which is not even the fucking equivalent to the shit that this homie has said so far, and get up in this violent fucking capacity and had Thumbelina Andy right there on the other side of the fucking camera just sit there quietly and be like, thank you, sir. Thank you for not murdering us in a Rambo-style fucking excursion. That's why we say, and this is yet just a simple fucking anecdote, just a singular moment from an overall system of, of racist uh, actions the criminal justice system takes on a daily basis. But this is yet another personal individual example. Great thing. Fuck you. When an illegal handgun goes in an apartment complex and discharge, it's felonies. I'll twist you like a fucking pretzel, both of you, if I have these cuffs on. I am a marshal. I'll put my fucking boot right up to your fucking side of your fucking head. Listen, come on. <laughs> the way, the way they did the, the editing is really funny though. Barb, fucking barb. <laughs> Kill me! Put a bullet in me right now. Put a fucking bullet in me. Let's blow my fucking head off right now. Take the knife out and put one in me. Just fucking end it. I should have pretended I had a gun out there. I thought about it all the way. I don't want to live no more. 
the money, 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 money. It's all fucking money, ain't it, you motherfuckers? You got your plus job. You don't know what the fucking recession is. You ever felt the pinch of the economy? You ever got a stop paycheck, motherfucker? You never felt it. You never knock out a check. You never knock out a fucking check, both of you. I did everything right, picket fucking fence, and I got it shoved up my ass because I went to a strip club and married a stripper. Say that on your thing. She's a fucking stripper and a devil that plays men. Look at back is new her six months and shot the fucking house up in the Europe. Then you're here. Wait, now he's like empathizing with Bacchus a little bit. Like, I would have shot that. Like, it almost feels like he's like, I, it was my house to shoot up. Not yours, Bacchus. You live in your fucking shit ass upstairs of the bar apartment that you pay 400 fucking dollars to. That's my house that I get to shoot up, not you. Bacchus has the best arc, yeah. You're fucking telling me? I want my fucking lawyer. Do you understand? Do I have to tell you in English? Get me a fucking lawyer. I don't care who the fuck you get. I'm not answering none of your fucking questions. I'm done. And I'm not signing none. Do you want to fucking stand me, motherfucker? Who's your lawyer? Who you want? Paul Dwyer. That's your turn. That's who you want? Yeah, he's no. the most racist one. All right? <laughs> he's a good wasp. He's not an Irish Catholic, but that's fine. Okay? As long as he's not one of those other guys, if you know what I'm saying. All right? Yeah. Get him. He's our chapter's lawyer. He does all the racism, you know, lawsuits. <laughs> no, I really don't want him because I can't even fucking stand him. Cliff continues to ramble about everything he hates for almost four minutes, ignoring any questions about his basic info. The detective and police officer eventually start talking amongst themselves and literally walk out of the room as Cliff is mid-sentence. But they could take 250 a week out of this is a hilarious thing. Why are Nazis and other white supremacists like this so rude? I don't know, just an observation. Has anyone else noticed this? <laughs> why are they... Why? You know, the Nazi thing is one thing. I mean, constantly saying the N-word and, and screaming white power is one thing, but... Also, on top of that, they are so uncivilized. <laughs> Out of your pocket. You can't be insane to make them fucking deals. I'm going to throw up. I'm not failing with you guys. Here. You need a glass of water or something, Cliff? Or... I haven't eaten in two fucking days. I'm self-employed. I will never ask anybody. I'm, I got Irish pride. I will die in my apartment. I'm man. asking you. You want me to get you a glass of water and I help if you? You could. Sure. She's a stripper. Don't you get it? I made the worst decision. I go from living in a fucking $250,000 house to a $600 crack apartment. And fucking Schenectady. Not Schenectady, dude. What the fuck? I suspect is that is he upset? Are there are there like people of color there? In Schenectady? I don't know. That dude went there to kill her that night with the gun. What man brings a loaded handgun to a fucking house? He went to kill her. What the fuck are we waiting for? Will you bring me to the fucking fucking lockup and put me in my jail cell? So I don't understand why he keeps talking about Bacchus, who, like, didn't actually kill her, when he actually did kill her. Like, it's not like he killed her. You did. Uh, you know, he, he shot the house up. But, like, you actually went there with a knife and killed her. So I can go to fucking sleep, do something. I fucked up, man. The original makeup of the city was 59.38, 52.31% non-Hispanic. 7% white, Hispanic, white. Oh, 24% African Americans. Oh, dude, yeah. Yup. That makes sense. That's why he did not like living in Schenectady. Yup. Okay. <laughs> Ooh. All right. Yeah, I've nailed it. Dude, I, I deal with this man.
on a daily basis. There are people like him that come into this community regularly or people that maybe aren't as old, but like are going to turn into him. Listen up, hate watchers that are watching me right now at every opportunity. That's your fucking future, okay? That is straight up your fucking future. The reason why I know this man so personally, like he's living down the fucking street for me, is because I deal with this man. I deal with younger versions of that man. I deal with older versions of that man every fucking day on the internet. But it is always this man. Some of you know exactly who the fuck you are. You're sitting in here right now watching. That's your fucking future, but you can change it. I promise you, okay? Stop with this white supremacist bullshit. Stop with this white fragility bullshit. Okay? Clean your fucking bed. Make small goals for yourself. Make some short-term goals for yourself. And ultimately accomplish long-term goals as well. Okay? You can do it. You can get better. You can avoid the ads at the top of the hour. That's right. I know. It frustrates you. You're like, fuck, I'm in here to hate watch. But like, what if in the 60 seconds... What if in the 60 seconds that I'm served an ad, he's just going to say some really fucked up shit that I can clip and ship to LSF? Well, listen, if you want an ad-free broadcasting experience, sometimes I give you a little bit of life lessons. You know the ad segue delegitimized the talk you just had, right? Yeah, I know, but I like to fucking have fun, okay? No, but in all seriousness, all the other shit that I just said is true. Um, obviously, you do have an opportunity to fix your life. You really think he killed his wife because he's racist, not because he's a degenerate, psychotic piece of shit? What? No, what? I don't, I never said he killed his wife because he's racist, you fucking weirdo. He's just a piece of shit because he's a racist. What are you, are you literally just trying to be like, listen, I'm a racist, but I would never kill my wife because I'm not a psychotic piece of shit racist? Is that what you're trying to tell me right now? Right after I said, you know, you're, you're exactly like this man. He's racist independently from being a psychotic piece of shit, even though, you know, oftentimes the two go hand in hand. Uh, he's racist because he has a white power tattoo. He's a psychotic piece of shit, also because he has a white power tattoo, but also because he killed his wife. Chatter really came out here and was like, why are you slandering racist? I mean, not all racist, bro. I mean, come on. I'm one of the good ones. I'm one of the good racists. That's what Chatter said. Yeah. Chatter be like, just because he has a white power tattoo and killed his wife doesn't mean he's a bad guy. Let's hear him out. <laughs> anyway. And I, 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 I wish I did my military career and, and fucking got out and become a cop. I want the full thousand, not the fucking 200 to risk my life and take a tree on over somebody's house, tie the fucking knot, cut him ranch, grab power line. Fuck that. I'm done with it. It's like, it's all I can think about. It's all that's on my fucking mind is this stupid bitch. This bitch. It's every fucking day. They do nothing. Nothing. Listen, I did not watch this, okay? But some could say I've been watching this man my entire life, okay? At least throughout my adult life in the past 10 years as I've been a political commentator on camera. In many ways, I've see, I see him every day. There's a little bit of Cliff in here right now in this chat. Nothing, 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 nothing. Well, fucker, it's done now, ain't it, motherfucker? Give me the back his clothes. Bring him in one-on-one. -on -one. Just fuck him. Strip me down, I'll fight him naked. <laughs> Bring both them coward motherfuckers in. I guarantee on my life I fuck their faces up. You got 10 grand, everything's under the rug. Honestly, Tesla is a dog shit car. Why? Because he hates Elon. Some high brain moments here. Wow. This dude has to be on mobile, right? This is the smartest Elon Musk stand, okay? I made a fucking random comment about Elon Musk and Tesla three and a half hours ago. But because his brain, his synapse is only recently fired and he comprehended what I was saying and even then still failed to understand, he came in here and is now, like, now offended. Three and a half hours later, had no time. Yeah, totally, dude. You were probably going to the fucking moon, right? Uh, uh brother, I had no time. I, I saw you. I remembered you were saying that. And then, you know, I was looking up my crypto portfolio. Bro, I was fucking killing it on my crypto portfolio, bro. We're going to the fucking moon, baby. You look like a homeless clown.
So you were always so full of yourself. Shroud Mouse. I like how calm you are today. You're really calm today. What happened? Oh, no. He was like a nice boy. What happened to this man? Wow, you're jealous, bro. Your interpretation is wrong. Turkey isn't in because of cultural difference. This is not racial things. Well, Turkey isn't a real democracy. Partners should have a labor union to have some power against Twitch. Wow, okay. Not a hate watcher. I'm enjoying. But aren't you a hate watcher? You watch racist hogs, corrupt politicians, and literal murderers? Yes. You just described things that are normal to hate. I am a hate watcher of corrupt politicians and racists and hogs and murderers. Yes. The point is, hate watching that shit is normal. Hate watching someone who hates, you know, hogs, corrupt politicians, murderers, shitty cops, like all this stuff, that is not normal. Unless you are aligning with those things that I am hating on. <sighs> like, hate in and of itself is not the problem here. I don't hate you, dude. Just a little trolling at the Tesla thing. That's it. Enjoy your stream. I mean, yeah, you don't hate me. You just love Tesla a lot. When you're a hard-working slob and you're white, they got to have at least one or two white guys that they fuck over to make it look like a fair court. Because I know I live like an outlaw. I'm a fucking hell's angel. I roll cross country to hell's angels. This hell's Why angels is... We're bad motherfuckers. That fucking cunt over there to put a warrant out on fucking Christmas Eve and call my lawyer? She's out of her fucking mind. Christmas Eve tonight, where are you going? You're going home to your kids, aren't you? I ain't going home to fucking shit. I lost everything. What's the fucking difference if I sit in a one-room apartment with no food or you guys support me? I was going to sell everything, buy an on-off-road dirt bike, and go right up into the fucking bear slides and go about 50 miles into the Adirondack Mountains and build my cabin and my shelter and bring two weapons, a 30-30 and a bow and arrow. I'd survive like that for the rest of my life. Done. Never come out again, never pay child support. Maybe in five or ten years I would have come out with a beer just to see how the kids were doing. I don't even know what to do anymore. Honest to fucking God. I just don't even know what fucking to do. Fucking right. I don't want to live. I thought about blowing my own fucking head off. There ain't nothing like getting up at fucking five in the morning and seeing the sun come off the top of the mountains and you're in a brook stream fucking hunting for brook trout. Go back to the campsite at 10 in the morning trouting eggs right over the fucking thing. That's a white man. That's Irish, brother. You know the Irish? Christmas... Even they're calling my lawyer for two payments, tell him there's a warrant going out for his arrest. Where does he live? I got a fucking apartment in the post office box because I don't want people bothering me anymore. This guy's the second most racist person in the 20th century. I'm number one. This guy's number two. No, he never said the C word, bro. Don't worry. He only said the N word, towel head, and numerous other slurs, but that, that doesn't put him in number two, obviously. We don't know if he ever says uh, the C word, so... There's a cheeky bum downstairs for me. You want to laugh? I have such a fucking kind heart. The cocksucker ain't got none. He gets a check every month, but he's barely living. I bring him up in my apartment. I give this guy my food before I eat. You guys never felt the recession. Huh. <laughs> The only fucking show I can relate with on TV now is Criminal Minds. I watch it ten times a fucking day. Cliff explains the plot device of Criminal Minds and how he knows everything about the legal system because of it. The investigator once again just gets up and walks out. Dude, I love this man in every way. By the way, what's Jakey? Is that, is that like a slur? I love this man so much. He's like, he unironically thinks, you know, because... He watched Criminal Minds. He knows everything about the fucking criminal justice system, dude. Yes, I would wear the exact... Yeah, he has the same style as you. That is true. That's without a doubt. But as Cliff is mid-ramble. How I know everything about it, but I can't win in family court. I can't win with nothing. I got my dick dragged in the dirt. Did he call my lawyer up? He offered you the, he offered you the phone to call him, didn't he? Cliff? You know what to tell you the truth? Why do I even need to call him? Man? Like I'm going, is there nothing he can do for me? Jakey is a Scott slang derogatory, a homeless alcoholic. 
Whoa. Why does he... Dude, that's how you know he's a nerd. He had to, like, read up on being fucking Irish and, like, accidentally picked up, like, Scottish slurs, too. That's awesome. Like, I've never heard that before. I wonder if he's even actually Irish. I don't, I don't throw up. This fucking, fucking cunt. <coughs> From the support collection unit. Barb. Call my lawyer on Christmas Eve. I didn't even know they were working. And then she comes in today, another fucking holiday to fuck me out in the ass. That fucking no good fucking cunt. You tell her. If I ever knew her fucking face, I would have tore her fucking heart out. The fucking cunt. Mother. For those of you who are just joining, Barb is, uh, when he's talking about Barb, he's talking about a collections agent who was collecting child uh, payments from him. And, uh, and, and he was late twice, even though he made a hundred fucking thousand fucking dollars. Cause you know, he felt the recession, dude. Fucking cunt. Clifford Patricia's dead. Okay. What? what? She's dead. No, Barb is not his wife. Barb is the collector. Uh, Barb is a debt. Oh my God, this thing keeps fucking flying up. Barb is a debt collector. Trisha is his wife, and Bacchus is uh, the the main villain of the story. the The firefighter guy who lives on top of a bar in a four hundred dollar apartment and has a banged up truck, but also is straight up dicking uh trisha or was i was having sex with trisha but he also is abusive as well and he like fucking beat up trisha and shot the house uh as well so a lot going on there god why did you fucking do this to me why did you take everything you got what did i do dude yes sir pop me it's not what we do, bud. You're white. Okay. Cliff, buddy, pal, you're white. And you're a white supremacist. Calm down. We will not kill you. No matter how hard you try. Okay. Now, if you were to say, you know, the C word, maybe. I can't fucking chill out. That fucking cunt over in fucking Warren County, fuck her. If I could take these things and chant, I'd kill her. And her whole fucking family, the motherfucking cunt. Money, 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 money. Fucking never bother anybody. Sit in my apartment all fucking day long. Can't even watch fucking TV. Can't have a conversation with nobody. Haven't eaten in two fucking days. I mean, what the fuck? I'm fucking starving. Fucking Christmas Eve, being told I got a warrant out for my arrest. Warren County Sheriff's. Well, here I am. I deliver myself. I lost everything. My business, I didn't even know how to cope in society. I'm going out of my fucking house. I don't even know what to fucking do. What do you want me to fucking do? He took every fucking thing from me. Every fucking thing. Where's the Bacchus brothers? Can you point me in their fucking direction? My whole house gets shot to fuck up a gunshot. Unregistered fucking handgun. Every bullet in the fucking, fucking, fucking chamber. You know what that was? Seven years. You ever read Guam, uh, Cuomo's gun laws? Everybody destroyed my life. Money, 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 money. You want my fucking money here? You want my money, asshole? I'm broke, boy. You got none, dude. Do you believe this man could be rehabilitated? 100%. Yes. I mean, he won't be. He's going to go to jail. He's going to go to jail and join, like, a fucking white supremacist prison gang and keep murdering and shit. But, you know, in a normal prison system, yes, of course. Like, he's abusive. He's narcissistic. He's psychotic. He's racist as fuck. He absolutely still could be rehabilitated. No way you can rehabilitate this man. No shot. 100,000%. You're 
you could rehabilitate this dude. Just not under these conditions. I know you don't, because you never felt the recession, you cocksucker. You get your check every fucking week. Your kids mean anything to you? Everything. Me too, every fucking thing. I just answered your own question. Every fucking thing. I pay 250 a week in fucking child How many support. raises in Norway get rehabilitated? What about that Anders guy? How's he doing? First of all, Anders Breivik is literally a fucking psychotic terrorist. A white supremacist terrorist. Also, um, there is there are organizations specifically dedicated to like life after hate and shit like that. Uh, that that work in uh, rehabilitating racists like white supremacists and shit, and they are effective. So uh, it's kind of weird, but Anders Breivik is a, an incredibly unique individual in in how insane and how violent uh, his his actions were. You could rehabilitate this dude. Every single thing he's talked about so far. Like a lot of the shit that he's talked about so far, you could have, you absolutely could solve with better social safety nets, better programs, mental health services that this dude could have been afforded. Like that doesn't mean that there aren't evil people. That doesn't mean that there aren't like, that there aren't like uh, people that can't be rehabilitated currently. Rivik said to be evaluated for release next year. Shut up. It doesn't matter. He's, they're not going to, they're not going to release him, though. They're still going to extend his sentence. That's what they do in Norway. They just continuously extend your sentence if you're someone like Anders Breivik. I was one of them fucking statistic Irish guys that have to fuck one. So they fucked me in the ass. Used to be the best guy in the world to pick a fucking pussy up anywhere. I fucked up. I married a fucking full-blown alcoholic and a stripper. 250 a fucking week. She's living like a fucking king. I, I, I... All utopia ideas spend $300,000 a year to rehab this guy. You would need constant therapy and medication for a year. Stop this guy's psychosis can't happen, man. What? Wait, what the fuck are you talking about? First of all, like... <laughs> Dude... How much do you think prison costs? Like he's still, still paying a fuckload, dude, for him to go to jail. You're paying like more than Harvard for him to go to jail every year. Oh, he's a fucking, oh, Jesus Christ. Hearts of Iron 4 multiplayer. I don't even know why I, I responded. Could go either way, though. Could be a Nazi or a tanky, either or. Nothing in between. Yeah, because jail will rehab this guy. That's, yeah, that's what I said. Good one. Hearts of Iron multiplayer. I can't even fucking live. Fucking guy can go in your fucking kid's house and shoot it up and walk away with misdemeanors. I got a piss. Goes when another cop tells me to keep fucking paying, 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 paying. And I'm taking your house and taking every fucking thing you own. I work for my motorcycle. She tells me she's fucking owns half of it. Never paid a fucking dime for it. What did she put the spikes on? What the fucking trees? That fucking cunt at the support collection unit. She's the one who did it all. That dirty fucking cunt. If I could ever get her in my hands, I'd cut her to fuck up her fucking. Why she fucking wants right now? I can't even get over it. How can women be so rotten and fucking ruthless? You married uh -huh. girl? Yes. How's it going? Excellent. I'm, I'm glad to hear that. It's Cap. I was set up to fail. And there's not a fucking thing I can do it. Do it, you know? No, I just don't even... Sorry, no rehab for this guy. He hates women on a deep level. <laughs> Yeah, you can't rehab people. I love that he's a white supremacist. And like, we can rehab that, but hating women on a deep level can't solve that, dude. Like, that's the reason why he can't be rehabbed. <laughs> he 
You cannot rehabilitate sexist. You can rehabilitate white supremacists, just not the sexist white supremacists. I don't know what to fucking say. What am I supposed to keep paying? I watch her build my fucking dream with another man. Fuck all that. I can't run from my fucking problems, man. I face them head on. That's why I know I'm a man. Cliff was transferred to the Warren County Jail soon after this moment. He spent nine months hatching up a defense, and his initial plan, as we know, was to go for a manslaughter charge by claiming profound loss of self-control. He even claimed the knife used to kill Patricia was taken from her own kitchen during some type of struggle. The state then provided witness testimony that showed... We shouldn't rehab this person because he's a murderer. Like, yeah, medical help could be fine, but what a waste for a person who will never be a contributing member to society. That's a fucking psychotic take, and if you expand upon that take, you become literally straight up a fascist. I would be very careful saying stuff like that because it's not up to you to figure out who would be a productive member of society or not. You literally sound like the Fox News person that we were watching earlier that straight up said all of these prisoners that were taken out of prison had uh, turned into these prisoners that were taken out of prison uh, had had gotten like uh, meaningful and, and gainful employment. Um, you're. Like you're you're saying that is like a like a bad thing or impossible is not. But he arrived at the house in full camouflage, brandishing a large weapon. They also played the segments from his interrogation, displaying his well-established hatred for the victim, along with the moment he vowed to escape from prison for the sole purpose of cutting up Barb into little pieces. He <laughs> pleaded guilty to murder soon after. On September fifth, two thousand fourteen, Clifford Burns was sentenced to life in prison with a possibility of parole after twenty-three years. He is currently housed at the Maximum Security Penitentiary in Clinton, New York. When they put the court order on me, they said all my guns had to go. I got rid of every fucking one of them. All right, motherfucker, you'll never find them. My favorite's the AK fucking 47 with a 30 round mag. Two of them taped together. I carry 10 of them. I used to go on the mountain all fucking day just popping my rounds. In full fucking camo. Sick. Ooh. That's sick. You're hard showing off. That's sick. He's fucking cool, dude. That's a cool guy. I really wish JCS did more, dude.